Coming to a washing machine filter somewhere near you. <laughs> Cladding screws. Welcome to The Restoration Couple, I'm Tim. Today is a big reveal because this cedar wall behind me is the big one. We've been waiting to get this up for a long, long time. First up, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Make sure you're subscribed, make sure your notifications are on because we're trying to put out about two to three videos every single week with loads going on, so you shouldn't miss a thing. Let's make a start. Afternoon all, we are gonna get on with our cedar wall. Nice British cedar that have been drying, hopefully enough um, that we can get them fitted now. A little bit like if you do a rustic pallet wall, you just want them thinner, but you still want the character on the front. That's what we're gonna do here. So they are sanded, but still got a bit of rustickness going on is on the front. First up, we dug the planer out. I'm gonna put some new knives in that, get set up. Hopefully, now they're out on the trailer, we can feed them through, do them in batches, and then they can go back in the dry. Right, so after many years of battling away with these old knives in here, I'm actually gonna change them out. Uh, they are double-sided, so you can flip them around after a while, but I've put so many meters through here, oak and all sorts, so I think it deserves it. Can you imagine if someone built a spiral head cutter for these cheap planers? How popular that would be. We've got a few issues with the planer. We're now at a point where we're having to use the vacuum to extract the chips, otherwise it just clogs. It's one of the issues with this one, it won't naturally eject them to the side like I was hoping into a bulk bag or into a box. So we're having to pull it through with the vacuum and the main issue with that is the vacuum. Only it lets us do about three or four passes before we have to stop and empty it. I have got a big uh, separate vortex system on a big drum but that's not set up for this thicker four inch, 100 mil flexi ducting. It's set up for a normal vacuum hose. So uh, we're getting there, but we've still got probably another 50 or 60 passes to do to get these down to the sort of 18 mil mark, which is what I want. But the sun's out, so I can't complain. Right, time to get a head start, ready for tomorrow. I'm gonna just get on and spray my shadow gaps now. We've got a bit of red tape, which is the airtight tape sealing our OSB together, and also just generally where the battens may show through.
Right, we are getting on through this wall now. Unfortunately, because they're all rough sawn straight from the sawmill, they're needing a bit more work. So we've already planed them, so they've got a nice finish and they're the same thickness. They're all down to about 19, 20 mil. But what we have got is a mixture of widths and also some of them just a little bit curved. We're trying to stay on plumb. You can see this laser here shows where that is. But because this one's curved out down the bottom here, I'm just gonna plane off probably the last 300 mil and take, it's just touching down there and that should mean that we can pull it all the way in. We're aiming for about two millimetre gap between them, knowing that they'll open up to probably about five. Hence why we're spraying it black behind. Although we're now, I tried to guess where the joins were. We're, we're nowhere near that. <laughs> so we're gonna use Sharpie on the battens rather than getting the spray out. We'll spray the other side again. These will be rattling around in the washing machine. Someday soon. <laughs> in, a, in a washing machine near you. Coming to a washing machine filter somewhere near you. <laughs> cladding screws. Okay, these are the cladding screws. So what we ended up doing, I, originally I thought there's no way about it apart from face fixing, which is probably the wise thing to do. Uh, they were gonna be rough sawn boards to start with, so I was gonna nail them, mark it all up nicely, nail them nice and level and just make a feature of the fixings. But I then thought, well, I'd get some tongue tight, the tiny little flooring screws or cladding screws. They'll bury, them, bury themselves in and kind of, they self heal like you might get with decking. Then I thought, well, why don't I just try and get in from each side and I can just about, you can see the little nicks, but I'm just about sneaking in one each side I'm back on the cedar wall today and look at it, it's looking good, it's looking sharp, but there's a load more cuts to do. I've got to do underneath the window now, I'm running across this side, the join in the middle I'm going to leave for now, but I was going to think about doing a capping piece there between the two halves. Apart from that, I'm trying to work through my off cuts now to make sure that I do not run out of timber, because if we run out here I've only got a bunch of rough sawn stuff up in the barn and it's wet and it hasn't been sanded or planed or anything. It's done. It's done. It, uh, it didn't take, like, it did drag over a few weeks, but we weren't doing it solidly for a few weeks, were we? No, we were no. doing it, it along the It probably took and... two or three days to get it up, but we had to dry it out. This is all timber we bought straight from a sawmill um, and a big pack of it, so. I love it. I think it's so, so cool. I'm going to have to, uh, hand on heart, I was wrong. Well, oh, I wasn't wrong. I was just, I had, I had an opinion. <laughs> hand on heart, I was wrong. Hand on heart, I was wrong. We planed it, you saw that. Uh, we were going to plane the back and leave the front rough because um, we'd already started doing a bit of sanding on it. But in the end, we've gone ahead and made the plane surface the feature um, because it's just so smooth. It's so tactile, like it's really nice. And it smells good. You'll notice that we haven't got any fixing visible. Well, not, not obvious ones. Yeah, but all you get are these tiny little indentations. Yeah. And actually, uh, yes, they're in a nice light, row anyway so it makes them look neat if you're yes. spotting them but because the wood has got so much going on we just nip them in the side here and you, unless you were looking for them you can't really see them tim's had a good idea too in terms of hanging stuff when these are a little bit bigger or maybe even now yeah we'll be able to hang a hook meters. through and then onto the baton onto the baton and then we'll be able to so when hang we things on. although i'm not sure i want anything to hang do you remember when so i did the pretty... slate roof at the last house <laughs> yeah they had those little, yeah, yeah, the hooks, that's yeah. how I fit it. They, I've got loads of them left, of course I have. So the spike <laughs> spike could go in, hang on, and we'd have a discreet little black hook. Yeah. That'll work really well. So we've still got a little bit to do, a little bit of trim around the windows, and I've left the end one, which is about a third of a board, just because we need to poke a cable through and bring a radiator cable across to about here. So we don't intend to put a finish on this, uh, we're just going to let it do its thing. These gaps will open up because these are green. 
um, they're not fully dry yet, but that's fine. They'll become a feature and hopefully they'll be relatively even. You'll notice that across the wall, there are a few black marks. This is just the rubber roller in the planar thicknesser where that just caught, you know, it jammed a little bit, just marks. So we will do a little bit of sanding, but probably just by hand vertically to make sure we don't start getting swirl, introducing swirl marks in it. And there's a footprint there. But apart from that, it is just fantastic to have that done. And you'll also see our next flooring episode soon where we get the whole of this done and the whole thing feels a little bit more like a house. Well, there we have it. If you've got any comments, we'd love to hear them. What do you think of it? Yes, it's a bit heavy. We've added a bit of weight, but you know, what, what's a bit more weight? That video, Joey's gonna be working on that video soon, aren't you? Going through the costs and oh, the weight. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're gonna do a big reveal of how much the house costs to build and also how heavy it is because we are still a caravan in some respects. So doing uh, the weight and I'm doing the money. Yeah. Sounds about right. Anyway. <laughs> Um, it's great, it's nearly done, and we can get on now with second fix. All the skirting boards are here, architraves here, there's lots going on. Uh, and we've got the kitchen started, so... Exciting! Might be able to make a cup of tea maybe, soon without... Maybe you know, for a wee here soon, huh? Hey, Plumbing. Plumbing's Plumbing. next. All the pipe work's here, the tractor is all geared up with its um, pipe layer, so... Oh yeah, and we also want to start our little garden, like vegetable pot patch. Oh yeah, there. and we've got 15 tonnes of compost arriving on Monday, so... Uh, <laughs> pigs to chase, sheep to catch, oh and sheep Goats. scanning day, goats being okay. born, it's all going on and of Haven't course... already, check it out the farm yeah, channel! Yeah, the DIY farm channel, we'll put that down below as well because some of you may not have moved across. Make sure you're subscribed over there because we have two videos a week going out over there as well. So it's all go. So like I said, do let us know what you think of this project and what else you might want to see us try around the cabin. But for now. Remember, if you can, do it yourself. And, and we'll see, see you next time. time. Are we doing the both bit? Oh God, it's like we had it to a T two videos ago. And well, you just let it. me say it all. You know, go on you said loads, didn't you? Go on then. That's it, done it. But for now. Remember, if you can, do it yourself. And we'll see you next time. It's all you. <laughs> right, now we've got to do the thumbnail. <laughs>